Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. It's been a while since I've gotten me back into projects. It's just been literally raining like crazy for the last couple of weeks, and I don't feel like getting all this stuff wet, dragging it to and from the storeroom. But this is going to be part three of the Chroma Color, uh, which currently does not have any color and does not, and has a, a blooming problem. And uh, so we've got it in service position. There's a 100 microfarad capacitor down there, which is uh, on the primary side of the driver transformer, which may be defective. Also, as far as the color goes, this is our subcarrier regen board, color board. Uh, we're going to pull that module off and check the components, and then Shango was nice enough to send me a uh, print, so we're going to test some voltages and make sure everything's cool with this thing and working. And we're going to see if we can't progress a little bit on getting the uh, machine to work correctly again. So I'm going to just check that capacitor there. It's probably bad, but we'll see for sure. Swap it out, and then uh, we'll work on uh, tweaking with the color board and see if we can take some measurements and find out what's going on. So let's get to it. Alright, so there's the little bugger. This is going to be tricky to do, so I have to. I have the camera positioned, but I'm pretty sure it's going to want to fall once I get the test instrumentation on it. So there's my cap checker down there, and I'm going to see if I can get the probes on this thing. Tricky, tricky, but there we go. All right, that cap is dead. Nope, it isn't dead. Intermittent, touchy, touchy. There we go. All right, so that one is alive. It's just how I had it positioned. Pretty loose and sloppy in there. It might have good ESR, but it could be the wrong value, so I may wish to change that. And then you've got this other one down here, this big fat guy. Not sure what you are yet. You have to position this better so that we can all see. And da -da -da -da. it's that guy right there. And of course, the camera is going to want to focus there. And let's see what I get fooling around inside of here. That one's tests okay as well. It doesn't mean it is. It just means that it's not open. And when these guys of 50 years of experience tell you that even if it tests good it isn't, I tend to believe them. Oh, let's see, that one tests okay down in there. So nominally that's alright. I'm going to double check the schematic and see what value they list for that capacitor in the drive circuit. Alright, so what we have here, that capacitor, as you can see, is in parallel with a 1.5 ohm resistor to ground. So, that capacitor could in fact be bad and you'd still be getting the ESR across the 1.5 ohm resistor. Come on, focus. Anyway. Uh, it's freaking out because of the Moyer pattern. So that capacitor, it could still be bad. I don't see a 50 microfarad. Maybe they upped it or something. Uh, I see a 100 microfarad. But anyway, I think we're going to change that out just because it has a... If that is in fact the cap, I'm going to double check and see if there's a 1.5 ohm resistor kicking around there. But we need to fix that blooming problem. And then we'll uh, tackle the color. Okay, so while poking around in here some more, I found something interesting underneath this capacitor is a little guy. That's your 50 microfarad capacitor right there. When I measured across it, it measured 3.9 ohms, which I thought, that isn't right. It's supposed to be 1.5 ohms, right? And so I come up here to the board, which looks like that part had been burned up, and somebody's got a 3.9 ohm resistor there that looks kind of toasty. 
So, if you're curious, I'm probably going to end up reading the ESR of the, the capacitor. So, let's try this again and see if we can come up with anything more interesting. In fact, I'm going to set the camera down on the top of the set here. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but we're going to try to measure this part here. This 50, 47 microfarad, which is the one that's supposed to be in the circuit, and that measures like crap. If I trying to get it so you guys can see the meter, that registers like a one microfarad, so that's trash. But more importantly, let's just double check our schematic real quick because I'm not thoroughly convinced that that's the right replacement part and that's supposed to be R what yeah let's get some light on it R821 yeah let's check our schematic real quick one thing I detest about SAMS is that the uh, oftentimes the annotations on the schematic and the SAMS are not the same so they're they're looking at this as R224. Uh, let's see if they have a picture of the board. And so see here's a picture of the board. And they call that R821. So that's supposed to be a 1.5 ohm resistor. And somebody's changed it to a 3.9. So probably when the horizontal out blew that took out that resistor we need to change that capacitor too so uh, we're gonna do that and see if that stabilizes our high voltage and blooming problem and then we'll get to the uh, colored portion of it all right I'm gonna try to do this the crazy way with the uh, lamp as my tripod there we go and of course I pop it out of the socket all right, so my goal here is is to try to figure out what's going on with this board. We're just going to check a couple of components. The soldering on this is like really touchy. Somebody's replaced this device already, but a lot of these connections are starting to break loose, so I really want to take care of this while I got it out. Uh, but yeah, that resistor, the stamps calls R821 supposed to be 1.5 ohms and if we read it, it looks like a 3 is that open really that can't be right that's measuring 2.1k 821 maybe that's why the thing is so cranky it shouldn't be that way I'm pretty sure that's not supposed to be a 2.1K. Interesting. Plot thickens. I'm thinking that's supposed to be a whole hell of a lot less. Alright, so consulting the schematic, this is supposed to be 2.2K, so that's alright. So I'm still wondering where I'm getting that 3 something ohms from, uh, because that shouldn't have been. And we're supposed to be looking for R224. That's supposed to be the 1.5 ohm jobber. Let me look at the schematic again real quick. All right, so R224 is supposed to be in the back side of the chassis. But while we're here, we might as well check these things and make sure nobody else is out of tolerance. So we're going to just look at some of these. Like this is probably a 33. Yeah, 3289. It's supposed to be a 33, 3.3 meg, that's pretty close. Should be like 100k. Of course it's in parallel with something, so. And what is this, 1.8k, that's pretty damn close. Another 100k, about the same, it's parallel with something. And let's see here. I'm covering this. This should be like a 27 ohm, or no, 270. That's 390. 
That's a little high. We should pay attention to that one. That 47 is pretty close. That's be an 18K, 19K. It's not enough for me to care. And this 560 has gone up to 642. This should be a 10K. 11, that's not bad. A bit of 115 ohm. Yep. And 180. That's pretty close. So the 560 ohm 1 watt is off. And the 270 ohm, uh, 200, yeah, 270 ohm is 390. That's going to make shit not work right. So let's see if we have some replacements. We need to change those. All right, there's our 560 ohm, and there's our 270 ohm just beneath it. Let's see if these things are correct before I put them in. So the 270 ohm. 272.6 and the 560, 561.2. I think we're good there. So let's start by removing the old part, which is going to be that guy right there. Probably not going to have enough time to troubleshoot the color today before I open up. You gotta remember, I do these things between business hours. Okay, and I have no idea where my little exacto went, so we're just gonna take this jeweler screwdriver and pry these leads up. Get the hemostats and yeah, pull it out. Come on. Oh, you wanna fight me, don't you? There we go. All right. It's like a quarter watt, but I have a half watt. That's what I've got. Yeah, let's see if I can just scrape the leads a little bit on this. This guy in. There's one down. Let's see where the other guy is. It's going to be that big guy right there. It's a pretty significant increase. That would. It's obviously not enough to kill the circuit since the, the machine still runs. But if I'm going to use this with any hopes of longevity, I should probably take care of this stuff now. Pop the new guy in. Trying to bend the leads a little bit so that it'll fit okay. And because this is obviously a source of heat generation, I'm going to elevate it above the board a little bit so some air can circulate around it. Three or four millimeters, that's probably good enough. This solder is not liking this 
board here. Hang on, let me switch over to some different stuff. All right, this has got a little more flux in it, so it should flow better. And it does. And then we'll touch up these loose connections here down by this driver transistor, which was replaced. It's almost like they should have put a heat sink on it. This is about ready to pop loose. Come on, damn it. And that doesn't want to even stick to that lead. Hmm. Let's get it all off of there. Try cleaning the old garbage off and then we'll try it again. That's better. At least it's sticking now. Don't want to put all this thing back together and find that I have bad solders. The rest of that looks pretty good. So we've got all that changed out. And then we also have this 3.3 microfarad, which is probably old and tired. Let's just check this real quick. And do you test good? No. You're crap. Alright. So let me grab another one of those. Okay. looks like they've got the positive facing down and that facing up. All right. So it's going to be those two terminals there. I think somebody asked last time what I'm using for desoldering braid. So there you are, that's what it is. Chemwick number four. Get a good shot of that. It's good stuff. It's not cheap. It certainly does work better than anything you can buy elsewhere. Uh, let's get this out. And let's get the new one in. I'm, I've got to imagine that this is going to have slightly better performance now that these out of tolerance parts have been changed. But who knows? Now, this is supposed to be a 2.1 or 2.2k at 1 watt. That certainly looks pretty toasty for 1 watt. I wonder if that's a half watt device. Let me see if I can find another one to put in there. Well, I don't have anything that will come close to that. And the half watt 2.2 Ks I have look smaller than that, so maybe it is a one watt. Definitely looks toasty. And I did have to redo the solder on it. So, I don't know. Time will tell. Eventually it will lift loose and the set will stop working or do something weird. Yeah, let's make sure we got all these touched up before we put it back in. It's also a good idea with one of these modules. Uh, you may wish to recrimp the pins on them. These little pins that grip down on the shaft here, they get loose and sloppy. You can push on them very lightly to retention them. Don't expect miracles. It's old metal. Don't fatigue it too much. They'll break. And I'm just going to do it from both sides top and bottom rows and then we'll treat the connector with deoxid pop it back on and we'll see if our infamous blooming problem is gone more or less I think all I'm gonna have time for today maybe some very introductory troubleshooting on that color circuit only so much time
And I've got another little video, just a simple Panasonic portable radio I got going. I'll upload that too, just to give you something to watch in the meantime. I've had this huge influx of people sending me stuff, probably because of the YouTube channel. Thank you regardless. Keeps me busy though. Alright, so. Here's my dental pick. Let me get some contact cleaner. And just put this on the low setting. I'm just going to hose the inside of this thing. Pat the rest of it dry. Alright. Let's go pop it back in and see if it explodes. So I guess that this thing down here is the 1.5 ohm they're talking about. Because if we look at where that lead goes, assuming I can push this out of the way here, that lead goes underneath that capacitor and comes up to where I've attached the new one. So that looks like a 1.5 ohm, but it was measuring a little high as I recall, about three something. Let's double check that. All right, so I got some test leads hooked up across this thing, and you can see it ain't 1.5 ohms no more. It's almost four. So that would definitely piss off the uh, the horizontal drive circuit. Uh, wouldn't be conducting enough. So we need to change that out too. Let me see if I can find a uh, a replacement 1.5 ohm resistor. I probably have one kicking around here somewhere. So it turns out I do. I have two left in inventory. So we're going to pop this one in and then reassemble the thing, turn it on, and see what happens to it. Okie dokie. So it's in there now. Measures about 1.8 in the circuit. It's one and a half knots. It's 1% tolerance. So now it's just a matter of putting the chassis back together picking up a signal generator and seeing where we go from there. Kind of worried about what's going to happen and hoping it'll work. So let's see. All right, boards are back in. Set's reassembled. Let's see if it flies or if it fries. I hear high voltage. This is a good thing. Generator's on. All right. It's going twitchy twitchy a lot. Of course, that could be my uh, batteries on this getting weak too. It's been a while since I've... It's still got that bloom thing going on quite a bit. Not fixed yet. I wonder what else could be causing that. Next thing to do would be to bust out the high voltage probe and see uh, what's causing that. But still no new no color. Let's go through our fine tuning range. Yeah, nothing. And I'm still not happy with our brightness either. So on large pictures, it still likes to bloom a lot. I mean a lot, a lot. But it doesn't get dimmer anymore. It just puffs up. It's strange. See, before it would get dim and blurry, but now it's just excessively bright. So I guess that's kind of good. So I'm not sure where else we're going to go on that problem. But the picture is pretty damn sharp, and it doesn't defocus now. Let's see, what was I looking for? Although it blooms, it doesn't defocus. It still stays razor sharp. So that's it's weird that it's doing blooming, but without the loss of voltage. At least that's not what it seems.
crazy. So I don't know what's going on there. I think the next step is going to be to break out the high voltage probe and see where our loss really is happening. But more so than that, I'm still wondering about the color. Because there's no color as you can see. I've got a little bit of time. Maybe we'll do some troubleshooting. Alright, so I'm really not going to have time to uh, troubleshoot the color in this segment. What I do know is that even after replacing all those defective components, we still have the blooming issue, and it's a pretty big issue. We don't lose brightness when it blooms, though. It just gets brighter and bigger. So I may have to break out the high-voltage probe and see what's causing that. Uh, somebody replaced the four-lead cap on this thing, and it makes me wonder if, uh, in some sense, of those are bad. If I turn the contrast down and the brightness up, you can see that the width of the picture expands tremendously the more brightness you add. I mean, it's huge. Granted, it gets super bright along with the blooming, but it shouldn't do that. And then still no color. No sign of color whatsoever. So, interesting. Thoughts, questions, concerns, please feel free to post them. This one's kind of uh, messing with my head a little. So I may ignore the high voltage part for now and get into the color troubleshooting in the next segment. But for right now, we've done a bunch of work in the horizontal sweep circuit, replaced the bad cap that would nominally cause blooming, but we still got blooming. And that's 1.5 ohm safety resistor we changed out. And uh, granted, it blooms without getting dimmer and defocused, but it still blooms, and it shouldn't do that. So, yeah. More about this one later. Thanks for watching the video. Hopefully more comes soon.